Yirashiyamase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And on the menu for this Saturday, we have Galgun, Double Piece. Indie creates follow up to their title, Galgun. What kind of taste will this girl shooting rail shooter have? Let's get cooking and find out. So just some quick release information. So the original Japanese release came out in August of 2015. But we have an English release just right around the corner from P-Cube going and releasing the title in the EU on July 29th, 2016 and in North America in August on August 2nd of 2016. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Galgun, it's basically a rail shooter where you're just on rails going and moving a reticule around, going and shooting girls, and we'll get a little bit into the story of it itself. It's a little bit more on the risque side, so you're going to go and see panty shots, girls in underwear, that sort of thing. So if that's not what you're into, I'd recommend going and skipping this video. That aside, let's go and look at what real quick, what kind of modes we go and have on the main menu. So there's your main story mode, which we're going to be looking into. The score attack, if you're interested in just going and moving through the stages for score. Collection, where you can go and see the information you've collected on the girls, your own personal scores, and look at the CGs you've collected. Dressing room, for going and changing the outfits that the girls in the game are wearing. Options, and your data transfer for if you're playing it on multiple systems. So this was originally released in Japan for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita. P-Cube is also releasing it for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita, so kudos to them for supporting the Vita. Thank you, P-Cube. If you like what you see here, I really encourage you to go and support their localization of this title by picking it up. Where I haven't played the localization yet, as it's not out, I can't go and guarantee how good it is, but I'm definitely hopeful that it'll be a solid localization. Let's get cooking with the story mode. So here we can go and continue or start from the beginning. We will, of course want to start from the beginning. There are two difficulty settings. Love Beginner and Love Expert. For our purposes today, we're going to be picking Love Beginner. Now we're brought to the character select screen, basically, where we can go and decide what kind of person we are. There are a total of eight character types that we can go and select, but four of them are locked out until we've gone and completed certain um, requirements in the game itself, mostly just score ranking. So at the top, we're going off of the English localizations of these. We have Bookworm, you're of course more studious, Jock, better athleticism, Fashionista, better style, Pervert, better, or I'm not sure if better is the right way to term it, but better lewdness, Nothing Special, so we have balanced stats, Gentleman, where we don't have any lewdness at all, and decent stats all around, Hentai Fiend, where it's all itchy all the time. And TFG, which is really high balance stats, but you need to go and get a god rank to achieve that particular type. For our purposes today, let us go and be nothing special. We're totally good with that. Here it goes and asks if you want to skip the prologue. This will go and, of course, pop up if you've already played the prologue. If you haven't, then I'm assuming it'll force you to go and play the prologue. But honestly, I can't remember, <laughs> as it's been a little while. So, for our purposes today, we're skipping the prologue. Now, loading. So, the character we play is Hodai. And similar to the first Galgun, he was visited by basically a love angel who's trying to go and get him happiness with in the realm of love. Instead of the first, and for the first Galgun, the angel was Patoku, but here we go and have her junior, Ekuro. But through some unfortunate circumstances, Poor Hodai was hit by a massive dose of love energy, and now any girl around him is automatically smitten to want to confess their love to Hodai. It's a problem, because he's aiming to go and confess to one of two siblings that he's grown up with, and 
if he isn't able to successfully do that by the end of the day, then he's going to be without love for the rest of his life. A rather terrible fate, truth be told. So between episodes, we are brought to this really nice data screen that goes and has your current rank, your current score, the number of feathers you have, which are a currency in the shop, which isn't currently available, your stats, and the ability to go and select our next episode, save, load, go to options, and return to title. So if we go into the next episode, we're brought to this screen. If there are multiple routes you can go and pick, those will be showed up on the will show up on the left side. There's also a fun new feature called Sakura Talk, which is kind of like a Twitter feed that you can go and look through. And there are certain quests that you can go and complete for additional feathers for the shop. You can go and sort by new and uh that sort of thing. So let's dive right in. Now loading. Gameplay is very similar to the original Galgun. We have a reticule that we can go and move around the screen. Unfortunately, they did go and take away move support. So unlike the PlayStation 3 version of Galgun, there is no move support for Galgun Double Piece. I think part of that could go and be due to its release on both the Vita and the PlayStation 4. So we use the left or the right stick to go and move our reticule. Then we can go and fire our pheromone shot at the various girls to go and take them down. As the English website goes and puts it, using your pheromone shot to keep the army of uh, girls at bay. Only by bringing them to ecstasy can you slow their advance. <laughs> kind of an interesting way to put it. So that's primarily our goal, is we're shooting the girls to go and bring them to ecstasy so they can't go and come up to us and confess their love to us, thus going and damaging us somehow. Throughout several, uh, several times throughout the game, you'll go and come to splits in the route where you can go and choose a direction to go. Here we can go and choose to go and move down the canal or go back up the steps. We'll just go ahead and continue moving forward. So one thing that's new with Galgun Double Piece is the reticule itself goes and reveals hidden items, objects, characters, and when you zoom in, it has the ability to go and see through objects, including girls' clothes become translucent, and you also have the amazing ability to go and discern a girl's three sizes if you go and focus on that area long enough. There are also, well, as I mentioned, it has the ability to go and see hidden items and see through, like, the wall there on the bridge. We can go and see through. There are items like characters' um, ID passes that we can go and select, as well as those items that I was going to mentioning before we started the episode to go and complete a quest for a girl that'll give us additional bonus points. In that behind the crate for example we go and have some glasses that somebody was looking for. Another new feature that we go and have in Galgun Double Piece are these scenarios where you're surrounded and being uh, approached by girls from all sides and you have to switch your viewpoint to fend off the attack. Of course the fastest way to go and take down the girls as you move your reticule around them there'll be a sound effect that goes and pops up and if you go and shoot that sound effect That'll go and be like a quick kill that goes and takes them to ecstasy right away. Rather than having to go and use multiple shots to, 
take them down, saving you a lot of time and potentially damage. The higher you can go in combo as well, the more points you can go and get, as is typical with any kind of... Well, not with any kind, but is typical with shoot 'em ups and rail shooters in general. Now, during these scenes, Ecuador goes and helps by letting you know what direction you need to go and be turning. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that in the English localization, if there'll be subtitles on the screen or how she'll be letting you know which direction to turn. We go and get a quick result screen at the end of stage with time, damage, that sort of thing calculated up, our score, and some feathers to go and spend in the store when we go and are able to access it. The kind of things you can buy in the store are upgrades to some of our abilities, damage reductions, or like stat modifiers. Let's dive right into episode 2. Now loading. Now here's a good place to go and show the reticule going and revealing hidden items and indeed hidden girls as well. Hiding behind that pillar there. There are also cute little bonus targets that are hidden throughout the stages that you can only see if they were within the view of the reticule. Those cute little angel sponges. The quest items can only actually be seen when you're zoomed in, so that's something to go and keep in mind. Another feature that makes its return from the original Gal Gun, that was definitely the wrong time to go and activate it, <laughs> is the Doki Doki field. There we go, that's a better time. Where you focus in on a girl, and you're going and poking her in various places, some which will go and raise her current Doki Doki level or lower it, depending on whether she likes being clicked there or not. And a successful Doki Doki field ends with the double piece and stat modifiers based off of the girl that you happen to go and click on. One difference that Galgun Double Piece brings to the Doki Doki field is it's actually possible to target multiple girls with the Doki Doki field. Up to three. Oh, there's a hidden target behind that pillar. So with there being hidden items character IDs, and everything to go and find throughout the stage, there's actually quite a bit of replay value for each route, or rather the game in general. At the end of our second route, we're presented with a cutscene that goes and brings us to the most important choice in the game itself. First, we have this little CG where we're going and seeing one of the character's love interest, Shinobu, and her sister, Maya, goes and shows up. 
Here we have to decide which route we're on, which character we're going and pursuing. Shinobu ga suki da, so we love Shinobu, we love Maya, we love both of them, and then there are also another couple routes past that. So, of the five routes that are available, only two are available at the start of the game. The other three are locked behind, I'm assuming, true end completion of the first two routes, but I honestly don't know as I haven't been able to get the true end for the first two characters. We'll go ahead and select Shinobu's route, just so we can go and show the very beginning of that. There's of course a little bit of dialogue there. And then we move on to trying to express our feelings that we currently have with the Doki Doki field. But her heart is protected by a guardian, similar to the original Galgan, so it doesn't work and we have to keep on chasing her. Based off of our stats, when you go and have dialogue selections like this, some options will be available and some will not be. So that's what your stats go into effect. And of course, these dialogue options will increase or decrease the affection of the girl that you're pursuing based off of what you choose. But as is always the case with love, things don't go smoothly and <laughs> Misunderstandings abound. We have to go and continue pursuing our girl of choice. After we go and complete episode one, then the shop is now available. We could use those to go and purchase the upgrades I mentioned before, but we're just going to go and dive into one more episode. And here we're introduced to another of the interesting and different elements that Galgan Double Piece goes and has. So in addition to going and having the Cupid Angel, there's a devil that's on the grounds going and causing problems. Going around possessing students, that sort of thing. When the girls are possessed, they go and have those cute little devils surrounding them and the auras. And we need to shoot the devil off of them, which will momentarily stun them, making it easier to go and... Um how to say, make it easier to bring them to ecstasy. Like so. So, some fun differences from the original Gal Gun. The way that girls go and give you their confession letters aren't always the same. There are some that go and have a more soon way of going and doing it. Some that will just go and run up and rather than giving you a confession letter will actually hug you and try and kiss you. And there's also some other things that can go and ha happen if the girls happen to go and be possessed. I'll see if we can go and let some of that happen as well. Let's see if we can show a multiple girls Doki Doki field as well. This would be perfect. So when you have multiple girls in there, you have to work on getting both of their Doki Doki meters up as high as possible. Which can go and be difficult because the camera moves around in its own way. We don't actually have control of that. It is possible to go and buy additional cameras in the shop though, so you can get a couple other views that might be more beneficial to trying to complete a Doki Doki field. And as has always been the case with the Doki Doki field, as the field goes and completes, there's like a screen clearing bomb that goes and brings to ecstasy all the girls that are currently on the screen.
I'm getting swarmed here. So here's a good example of what can happen to you when a girl is possessed by a demon. She can go and push you down and like uh, stomp you. All sadistic like. And there we go and have the end of that particular episode. So our devil character, Corona here, has a really fun way of going and talking and seems like a really amusing character. Instead of ending all of her char all of her sentences in, Jap in the Japanese desu, she goes and uses a uh, more devil appropriate death. I'm not sure how they can go and possibly translate that into English, but I'm hoping that they go and do a good job, because I think it's a really cute way for a character to go and talk. Anyway, that'll wrap up my look at Gal Gun Double Piece. So, just some closing thoughts on it. As far as the, compared to the original, like, it seems like they tried to go and add in a little bit more gameplay than the original title went and had. So it's a fun mix of visual novel and rail shooter with some like dating sim aspects thrown in there as well. So if you're into any of those kind of genres, then this one's a fun one to go and give a look at. As far as graphics are concerned, it's not really much of a step up from the original Gal Gun. And part of that could go and be due to the fact that it's being released on both the PlayStation 4 and the Vita, so they had to go and scale down the graphics a little bit from what the PlayStation 4 is capable of to make sure it could work on the Vita. But still, it's great that Indie Creates and P-Cube are going and still supporting the Vita. That's wonderful in my mind. I also find the character designs to be rather cute as well, and the theme itself just bizarre. Very Japanese. So, as always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me today for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. If there are other Shoot 'em Ups that you'd recommend I have a look at for Shoot 'em Up Saturday, I'd love to go and hear from you about those. Please leave those in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for coming out and joining me, and I hope to see you again next week. <laughs>